State salvages things for the moment. On the free ball. Gillis ends it. Wisconsin has a win against Penn State for the first time in five seasons. Thank God we didn't go completely defeated our whole careers. Exhaustion. Yeah. Looked like a drowned cat. Um, no, it was just like total euphoria. Like, finally, like we did it. Welcome to the Big Ten Video Recall Series. Today we're going to take a trip down memory lane and watch some Big Ten volleyball. It's Wisconsin, Penn State. Coach Sheffield is here with his superstars from 2016, Haley Nelson and Lauren Carlini. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Excited. I haven't watched a match since I graduated, so I'm pretty <laughs> fun. <laughs> Haley, Lauren, this is your senior year. How important is this match to get a W over Penn State? <laughs> I mean, we were completely defeated against Penn State up until this point, and obviously we didn't have another guaranteed match against them this season. So for us, I mean, this was a W that we'd been waiting for for a really long time. And I think going into this match, um, like our mentalities couldn't have been honestly better. We were so excited to, you know, go up against them, and we just felt like all the work – and L's we had taken over the years who were finally building up for this match. So we were really looking forward to it for sure. Been, it had been a monkey on our backs for, for a while. This had been a team that had, uh, a program that had knocked us out in, you know, uh, in the national championship match uh, early on in their career and then knocked us out in the NCAA tournament uh, the following year. So these were, these were two teams that were battling each other, but uh, they, were, they had our number a lot more than we had theirs at that point. Haley, doing what you do best there, just going up, being on time for a kill. What was that combination like, you guys running that for the past four years? Yeah, no, it was great just because we were really good teammates, obviously, but really good friends off the court. So just having that dynamic and we were able to have really open, tough conversations at times. And um, honestly, I felt like most of the time I just read her mind and knew what she was doing or where she was going to go. It, by the end of the career, it really felt like that. So Definitely a fun connection and out of bounds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was an interesting blocking uh, combo there. Coach, talk us through what happened there. Yeah, so Gilly attacked on the right side out of serve receive and was just kind of <laughs> loafing around getting back us to the left side for the block. So, you know, sometimes you just got to pick up Gilly slack. It's kind of a <laughs> kind of classic move on her part. She's the laziest human I've ever had. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, it's it, the heat has been turned up already. I actually probably what happened was we were in a spread and the blockers had to switch and we didn't quite make it as quickly or or recognize that we needed to yeah. stay right there. But no, Gilly is definitely she's definitely not the laziest. Yeah, you're, you're, you're getting insight. You're getting insight to Haley Nelson of what how brutal she can be to teammates, kind of like Michael Jordan is. Uh, <laughs> A lot of similarities between the two. MJ, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Molly Haggerty a little bit and her freshman year for you. She was ready to play for us. You know, a lot of times you see freshmen that are wanting to um, uh, kind of feel their way out a little bit. She was she was wanting to be an impact player from day one when she got in the gym. That was a that was a that was huge for us. Kind of interesting watching her go back with that deep standing serve from twenty feet off the court. That's she didn't come in with, with much of a uh, service press, presence, so we just sent her as far back as we could and just told her to rip it. Uh, Lauren, how important is it to have two really aggressive outside hitters? You see a great setup there from you, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, how vital is it to have two outsides that contribute in such big ways? I think the biggest thing, uh, the biggest difference between Gilly and Molly is Molly runs a super fast ball. Usually there's a lot of space in between blockers to be able to attack. Whereas Gilly, um, she had a higher ball, a little bit more time for the blockers to react. And so she had to chop off the block a little bit more. Um, she had a really high, she had a couple swings in this match where just connected really high with the ball and kind of snapped it over the top and in front of the defenders. And so they were both extremely effective, but they just scored in different ways. Um, so for me, it was really fun to play with both of them. You know, Lauren, that was one of the things that I thought you did a really good job with uh, this year. And from this camera angle, you can't really see, but it was totally different tempos that, mm -hmm. that we were running for both left sides. Uh, Molly's tempo in system versus Gilly's tempo in system. And just be able to 
to manage that in your head over the course of a rally uh, was that was a strength. But yeah, it was it was uh, from that from that inline view, you can really see the difference uh, of what we were doing with both of them. Yeah, and I think going along with that too, there are times long rallies or you would just switch rotations and sometimes you forget who's in the front row and you're like, oh crap, what ball am I supposed to be setting? Like what tempo am I at? And having them always calling their route, that's so huge. Like having that communication line always open. Um, Cause even if you can't see them, you can hear them and you know where they are at in their route, who is there um, and what type of ball they're needing. And that goes for everyone on the court, especially middles and transition. So yeah. how important that communication line is. I think we just have to comment, Kelly, you had a lot more hair in this match. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, yeah, a lot more. A lot. <laughs> the luscious locks back in 2000, what is this, 16? Let's stay that focused on the play, shall we? <laughs> I, I mean, I couldn't help it. It just was in my face. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, I'm going back and I'm watching all of this and I'm like, I've either played with the majority of these girls or played against them in professional leagues. So it's kind of cool just to see like the full circle of like playing against Haley Washington, you kind of want to like, you know, cause she drives you nuts and she's super crazy. And now I play with her and I'm like, I love her like big fan of Haley Washington. Um, so yeah, love playing with her. She's just an awesome teammate who is willing to do whatever it takes to help the team win. Um, oh, now she's <laughs> well, yeah, I hear that. Right on cue, blocking you. Thanks. Yeah. So if you, so, yeah. so if you had to pick between Haley Washington and Haley Nelson, who would you pick? It's a close one. <laughs> of course, it's you, the OG. <laughs> you better sleep with one eye open tonight if you oh. don't pick Nelson. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Though it was always a blast. Um, I mean, Penn State definitely edged us out over the years for sure, but they were always really fun to play because they had so many offensive threats, especially for me as a middle. Um, I loved, you know, going in and having to read the plays and they had like no ceiling essentially for the different plays they could run with the players that they had. And Simone Lee for sure almost always had a killer match against us, which was kind of a pain, but she's a great player. So it was so fun playing them just because there was so much to read. The things that when we were playing uh, these guys this match, uh, right there, you see, uh, this is something Penn State does. White made a dig to her right, and now she's over there to her left and there. That's one of the things that most teams, um, when you're playing them defensively, the people will stay in the same spot over and over again. When you're playing Penn State, you can see the dig to her right. Now she's going to go to, uh, to a cross-court dig. Okay. And the middle backs, uh, they will, they will, they will dig from one spot and then go to another spot an awful lot. And so sometimes, you know, as hitters, you're programmed to hit, maybe not hit the same shot twice, especially if somebody digs it. But a lot of times when you're playing Penn State, maybe that's something that you want to do. But so we were kind of going back to our attacking. We were running a lot of inside plays, uh, because their block was so wide and trying to uh, – they were having a little bit more difficulty of setting that up when we were coming inside for our reps. Coach, is that especially effective when you have maybe a smaller setter on that pin blocking? It allows for a little bit more space for the hitter to hit into? Yeah, she had a lot of – you know, there were a lot of gifts that, that you know, Dietering had. Certainly, or, you know, we talked about her serve earlier. But she wasn't a, a, a huge block – Right there, uh, I think the setting up uh, was a, a little bit of a challenge. So, you know, I think there were some times we were coming inside and hitting over to the line. Uh, we really worked the court. That was a great out of system swing. We, I thought, we, you know, these guys were really hitting out of system while you could see Gilly coming back inside and working back over over that line, over that smaller block. That uh, might have been a little bit out, but. Um, we were pretty effective with that, yeah. that inside rep this match. Yeah, Abby, I played with Abby actually my year of pro in France. And one thing that I really saw from her is she's a fearless player. And I think that was great for Penn State because she really brought in that fun energy to them. Um, but she was really fun to play with after as well. So I enjoyed being her teammate a little bit more than I enjoyed playing against her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah.
what's it like to to watch this and and see the fans and the support that they gave you throughout your four years there i mean there is no words to explain how much they mean to us and how much support they showed us over the years and we're a little jealous now because they're opening the upper deck and that spells out and then before we know it the whole field house is going to be full and then we're going to have a new building who knows so yeah a little jealous about that but just i mean it was incredible incredible to see the crowds every single night and um, I think one of the highlights, honestly, at least in my career, is just even though we lost to Stanford, um, the standing ovation from the Badger fans, our last, last match at home, um, was a moment I'll never forget. Like, I get chills just thinking about it now. Um, it was just so powerful, and I love, love that tradition that um, we made. Yeah, I think what's so special about our fan base um, is that I really felt like you know, they root for us outside of just our matches. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like the fans knew what I was majoring in and, you know, they knew I had a little sister that played volleyball, like things like that, um, that kind of, you know, show that they care about us as people more than just, you know, whether we win or lose. And you could feel that when we were playing, like we could feel that they were with us, like every step of the way, even when we were struggling, you really grow and get a lot of self-confidence when you feel, you know, 6,000 people behind you. So for sure. Yeah. But Lauren, let me talk to you for a second. How important is it? Like you're known to be such a great setter as you see there in that play. Love that backing up and pushing it all the way out. But how important is it to be a great defensive player, a great server, a great blocker, if you truly want to be an elite setter? Yeah. I mean, I would, go to say at the international level, it doesn't matter what position you are, you have to be well-rounded. There's only, I think, six subs now. And so once you come out of the game, you're out of the game for the set. There's no chance to go back in. And so um, just being well-rounded and having all of those skills in your toolbox. And so as a setter, being able to be a good blocker and get positive touches so that our defense can work around it being a good defender and picking up tips or being able to dig those hard hit balls at you, it gives our offense another chance to get another chance at a swing um, and another chance to score. And so it's just finding opportunities to make your team as successful as possible. And whether that's digging a ball or making a really long set or getting a good positive block touch, whatever it is to kind of change that momentum and give your team another chance at a swing. Um, that's really one thing we focused on a lot this year. And I mean, even through the international and pro career as well. Emma McDonald coming in. Yeah. Our Lord and savior. I know. Now she, <laughs> now she's engaged in grad school and Gosh. look at her back there. Grown up. <laughs> she was so clutch. Like she was so clutch. She would come in and you know, you can count on her. Like she's going to rip off a couple serves at least. Yeah. We, I mean, we have so much respect for the serving specialist yeah. um, at Wisconsin and really anywhere <laughs> because they really take some heat in that position. That's for sure. <laughs> We saw the flashback there of your match against uh, Minnesota, um, and after that match, um, Haley and you had a had a meeting, and I'd like for you to talk a little bit about that. You know, the the match wasn't even as close as what the three. I mean, it was just a blowout, I think. And uh, come on, Molly. Um, and uh, I think I went down there and tried to take a little bit of the edge off. Hey, this is on. You know, you're gonna get beat this bad. This is on the coaches, and we'll. Uh, you know, let's get back to work. And uh, um, we've all got to be better, myself included. And uh, I think what I remember is after talking to the team, uh, Haley goes right up to the gym and why the fans are still leaving and is up there serving uh, for I don't know how long, probably a good half hour and uh, then doing some block moves and probably not just working on her game, but just trying to get the frustration out would be my – uh, would be my guess. Yeah. Our mentality as a program is always, you know, on to the next, on to the next. And that, I feel like that was something that I lived and breathed. And I always, you know, felt that way, no matter what loss or win that we had, but that match was just so unacceptable um, to me. And Minnesota played amazing. They're an amazing team in the big 10. You can win or lose on any given night, but we, we did not show up the way that we expect to and the way that we train 
Um, and I, I just felt like that that was something that we needed to recognize and not just move on from just to prevent it from happening again. And then personally, I didn't feel like I had a good match either. And so mostly I just went up there because I was so frustrated with how I'd served and it just helped me blow off some steam. Um, was certainly not anything I'd ever done before, but I just was like so frustrated. And I think that in the end, we really learned from that match and it really, you know, had us turn a new leaf. But sometimes, you know, it's important to learn and not just move on right away. At least that's how I felt. And I think that it was something that our team really responded to well. Um, and the coach gave me a call afterwards and was kind of upset that I took the, uh, the pressure off the team. She, she thought I handled that wrong and said, no, this is on us. This is not on you. And, and uh, I don't think you should have taken, taken the pressure off of us. We've got to own this and we've got to, uh, we've got to get better at this. This wasn't a coach's loss. This was a player loss. Uh, I, I remember that conversation. What, what a swing. I mean, that's a great. <laughs> there was some back swing on this, but I loved it. <laughs> well, first of all, before you guys jump in, we got a different matchup here, as you can tell. They don't have Dietering serving into that row one. Kelly's and like, you just point out my strategic <laughs> switch. <laughs> He's like, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> adjust the glasses. <laughs> Genius. Yeah, honestly, this match, even when we lost the third set, we were still, we were in it. I mean, it was mm -hmm. such, we were just firing on all cylinders for mm -hmm. sure. Like, you got to realize we have freshmen on the team. They haven't they don't have that baggage that you yeah. know, we've had over the years. And it's all about being on the same page and approaching Ooh. every match the same way. And I feel like we really did that in this match. And it was awesome. It really felt like it was lights out. It was so fun. Lauren, I love that set. How important is it for you to be able to put up a hittable ball no matter what the situation is? Here you're facing the net, you're parallel to the net, dishing out just a perfect set to the outside. Yeah, I'm sure Gary White's on the sideline like, oh, yeah, we do that every day before practice at a girl. Um, I don't think I've done it since this match, but um, getting those reps in and just knowing you have the feel for it, um, I don't know, it just sets you up for success in that moment and having the confidence to be able to deliver a good ball wherever I am. And I know, I don't know if it was this year, it might have been a couple of years where I struggled a lot with super high digs or super high balls. Um, which is ironic because I just played in Russia, which is only high balls. But anyways. Look at that middle dig. There you go. I know. Look at that middle defense. Girls can't do anything. <laughs> um, and so it's about getting the reps and feeling confident and not shaking in your boots when you're waiting for this huge high dig to come down. Um, so, yeah, it's all about repping it out and feeling confident in those, in those moments and during those types of balls. Haley, that was a clutch dig. Dig it high, 10-foot line. That was fantastic. I love watching you play backcourt. Let's see what happens here in the next play. Oh, oh, right. up, you know? <laughs> wow, you really framed that one, Audrey. Did you know that was something? <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, see what happens Yeah, next. I've seen the game. Right there, wait a minute. That was a big-time set and swing yeah. right there. I, I think, think, I, think I blocked out what happened. <laughs> yeah, the bump set's incredible. The things you're able to do on the on the run here. You know, as setters, we love things when we're in system, but when you get a ball like that, you really get to demonstrate your creativity, your skill. You laid that up there perfectly, Lauren. Hats off to you. That's what makes you great. Yeah, yeah. she's a really good bumper. <laughs> <laughs> All about bumping. <laughs> Gary hates when she does that, but I think it's great. <laughs> it's like, for the love of God, get under the ball and set. <laughs> But I don't want it, Gary. I think uh, Gillis's front row. Um, she was an absolute stud in this in this match. I think she led both teams in kills. Um, you know, just talk about her. I don't. I don't feel like we've given her enough credit for what she has done in this match. Um, what was she like as a teammate? What was she like as a player? Yeah, I mean, we looked up the box score uh, before this. We didn't want to watch the match to spoil it, but we looked at it and we were both like. Gilly, look at this match you had. <laughs> we had no, like, I mean, it's just been so long since we thought about it. And she absolutely just took over. Um, and Gilly, she was such a joy to play with. She brought such a light to the game. She, anybody that knows her knows that she is just one of the most caring, you know, passionate, like teammates you'll ever have. And she works so hard and cares so much about the game. And 
she's just such a light. And I think she brought, you know, such an amazing dynamic to our team, you know, when she joined. And then this year I felt like she really grew and blossomed. Um, but I, we love Gilly. She's amazing. She yeah. was an awesome teammate. This is one of those rotations, especially when you have a good server. It's like first ball side out as soon as possible. As soon as we get a good pass, oh, we have to find a way to convert because oh. if she gets on a roll, it's so, so difficult to stop. I, I want to jump in on there because Lauren, the, you got that and, and we've skipped over a few times. But that, there was a net violation, but that was watch, watch her. Mm -hmm. She gets the middle blocker up. Uh, Lauren got blocked early, and a lot of times there's times that it, you're okay with the setter getting blocked. You've got to be, you've got to be respected, and she makes a really hard move, really hard move to get that blocker up, and um, and then when she tries to recover, gets into the net. And I think you know we've seen that a few times where she she's making these really hard jump sets, really big arms to try to get a blocker to go up with her. A great play and great set right there. That's another example of the, the wide blockers and Lauren's ability to be able to get people one-on-one. -on -one. And that's, I mean, that's really hard also as an, an attacker. I'm moving forward. I'm on the run. It's a strange play. And for her to stay on her route and on tempo, like that's way more. Right, that might, have, that yeah. might have been the play of the match right there. I, I agree. Coach. Right there. Yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. Mom came in and just boom, hammer time. Look at, this, look at that set. Yeah. Look at this out of system swing. That is look at that. So fast. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really nice set, nice drive. That's where the that's where the experience of those two playing together and, and be able to to uh, keep this in system and getting into that gap. That was exactly. this is a really big time pass set hit. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, an unforced error there, um, and you you tended to have a few more in the fourth set than you did throughout the whole match. So um, I'm wondering, you know, were there nerves that are involved, or just hey, that's the way it goes. Sometimes you got to forget about your play and move on to the next one. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a little bit of that. I think also we were a, an extremely sweaty team, so if anyone <laughs> their platform with the ball, it's probably going to sweat a lot. Yeah. Oh, so, I mean, yeah. Edward Scissorhands always makes it in a match, one or a few times. Nice dig. Yeah, no. Another nice dig. <laughs> Both teams are controlling the digs. Yeah. You know, the, that cover, get that ball up. I mean, that's a uh, – both teams are able to get really good swings, uh, not just in that rally, but th throughout the match. Here come the Badger fans. They're up and rumbling. They're like, let's go! <laughs> they watched us lose for a while. So yeah, they're they're like, they're it's ready. time. Let's see how this second uh, serve receive pattern goes for you guys. Ooh, nice dig. Yeah, a little down ball coming your way. I chose to go to the right side again. Same type of shot from Chris Kova. That's a great set oh, and, a, yeah. and a great dig. Good touch. Here we go. <laughs> Hit a different shot, Ro. <laughs> I know. I think a couple times I was like, there we go. We just had, we got to overload the other half of the court and then bring in Molly. Hammer time. Oof. All right, good pass. All right, that's what she does. Yeah, she we does. were kind of figuring that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I really did enjoy Haley Washington play. She she was kind of, um, I mean this in the nicest way, kind of a knucklehead personality, just a, a, a clown. <laughs> she's always very entertaining, but boy, what a swing she had on that slide. I mean, she's super effective. Oh, Amber's right there to cover. Nice swing, T. Oh, we got Gillian, <laughs> the queen of the match. Yeah. And Lauren, your front row at this point, you've got two attackers, but you're also in a great opportunity here to uh, show what you can do on the block. Oh, oh the old no. Gilly, thank you. <laughs> 
a great touch there by yeah. T and Lauren. Look at that energy. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And you guys, Lauren, take a look at the stare down that you give. Ah, what a tremendous block. But when I watched this the first time, I took a look at your face here and I feel like you were just staring her down. Like, I'm going to be here all night long. I don't think I meant to do that because I'm usually not that type of player, but I was so locked in in this match. I think I like blacked out. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Bring it, Moan. Yeah. <sighs> the looks could kill. <laughs> Carlini wants Gillis. Penn State salvages things for the moment. On the free ball. Gillis ends it. Wisconsin has a win against Penn State for the first time in five seasons. Seniors, captains, you guys beat Penn State. What's the feeling? <laughs> There you go. I mean, thank God we didn't go completely defeated our whole career. Exhaustion. Yeah. Looked like a drowned cat. Um, no, it was just like total euphoria. Like, finally, like we did it. And we did it in a really strong, I felt like we just had a really strong match the entire night. We were in system a lot. We had great defense. And obviously, Gilly went off. And it just, it was one of those matches where everything was humming. And yeah. Just incredible. Great match. Yeah, and I mean, it felt really good after getting, you know, whacked the week before. It was big just for our season in general, not even just because we hadn't beat Penn State. Like, for our season, the momentum was really important for us to have a match like this under our belt to really, you know, give us an idea of what our potential was. Um, so this match was really fun, and I was really proud of the younger girls on our team and the way that they responded from yep. Molly to Emmy you know, to our serving specialists, Dodd and Amber. I felt like everybody showed up to this match and that's what made it so fun for us.